for more in-depth analysis on China's population, I'm joined now by Wang Yu. She's an assistant professor of sociology at Duke Kunshan University. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, first, I'd like to get your reaction to Sichuan province's decision. How is that being received? How do you think it will be received? And do you think it will affect change as intended? Um, some of the policy definitely released so that to encourage uh, more families to have more children. However, I think uh, the impact might be still be limited because we all know that the underlying forces driving uh, fertility decline is quite complex in China. Uh, there is a growing individualism, and also, as we have known, the, there is a, a rising cost of child rearing. And also, young people are facing elevated pressures nowadays. So that uh, not just to release the policy, to change the policy, I think to encourage more, uh, uh, in, to encourage couples to enlarge their family size. We should also think about how we can alleviate the extra burden of child rearing by providing affordable child care uh, services, by providing longer and more maternity and paternity leave, and also to reduce uh, gender discrimination and the motherhood penalty on the labor market and also promoting gender equity within the household. So I think the, the, the procedures or all the measurements we should, should, should do should be more multiple, not just targeting on uh, letting more children to, letting more couples or families to have, uh, you know, uh, more uh, uh, general policies. And Professor, what would it take to make those changes and how long would that take to actually come into effect? And I know that's a very tall order because there are so many different things that you mentioned, from cost to um, workload, everything. Uh, what kind of change would have to take place? Um, I think for now, the discussion, the most of the discussion focus on um, how can we offer additional support to family? because now the child rearing mission is still centered on the family. So that uh, a lot of couples, especially young couples, they express a lot of concerns about raising extra more children in their household. So I guess the first step probably to think about how we can better our care system um, so that the young couples may have more confidence to have more children. Uh, and uh, receive great support from the state or from the government. How long it would take? I think this is a very good question. Population change or fertility change is a very slow process. I think we can have uh, good hope or uh, uh, continue to promote this change. However, it's going to be slow because nowadays I think young people's uh, you know, their uh, intention for birth or their intention for families are also changing. There is a value change here as well. Let's back up a little bit if you can provide some perspective to the larger part of this. What would you say are the biggest concerns right now looking ahead regarding pop, uh, China's population decline? Yeah, the uh, the current ch uh, China's co population decline is highly relevant to many uh, other demograph demographic shapes. For instance, the decline in fertility, and also another big concern is the uh, the aging population in China. So, as we have all known, that the size of the population aged 65 or older is rapidly growing in China. So, in the last 20 years, from 2001 to 2021, the, uh, the aging rates in China has increased from 7 percent to 14 percent. So perhaps the rates will surpass 14 percent very soon, indicating that China will transition from an aging society to an aged society. So some of the population projection based on authority organizations show that the size of an aging population would be around 400 million in 20 years. If the projection is accurate, the size of the aging population after 20 years in China would be even larger than the current U.S. population. So this demographic trend also is a big concern for our society. It represents uh, special challenges to our society. We are aging too fast and too big in size, as we know that 
aging is a predicted and common trend in many modernized societies. However, Western societies may have 50, 60 years or even longer time to get ready for the arrival of the aged societies. But we actually have much, a much shorter time to get prepared and get ready for this demographic shift. So many things to consider. Professor Wang Yu, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us from Shanghai. We appreciate it. Thank you.